It's Bevy 0.18 release day, and if you're wandering into this video, then Bevy is a free and open source data-driven game engine built in Rust, and we'll be covering the best new features. There's a quick start guide on the website. The Bevy examples in the repo are a fantastic resource, and if you want more, I have my own Bevy workshops over on Rust Adventure, which helps fund this channel. My personal favorite feature of 0.18 is that the release train is back on schedule, and this release launched in the desired three-month release train window. This means contributor and PR numbers look a little bit smaller than previous blog posts because some other recent releases like 0.17 have trended towards almost double the time. For 0.18's release, we have 174 contributors generating 659 pull requests. And the highlighted game for this release is Toroban, an infinitely wrapping puzzle game available on Steam now. The link is in the description as always. And with that, let's get into the new features. Much work has gone into Bevy's atmosphere and atmosphere-related features. In 0.18, Bevy's procedural atmosphere causes sunlight to pick up the right colors as it travels towards the objects in your scene. This is well integrated with the volumetric fog and other rendering features, so it's a great time to drop it into your projects. This release also comes with a deep level of scattering medium configuration for those that want to emulate other planets and foggy coastlines, as well as great presets for Earth-like parameters. And Solari is Bevy's experimental real-time ray-traced renderer, which has seen a boatload of work this cycle. Specular materials and reflections, performance improvements, shadows, and more. The demo you're seeing on screen right now is running in real-time on my RTX 2080 with DLSS turned on. And as always, the author has a deep rundown of the work on their blog. Definitely give it a read if you're interested in deep rendering logic. Speaking of rendering, a whole host of new rendering fixes made their way into Bevy's PBR material. The fixes really speak for themselves on screen here, and there's a bunch of nice Bevy photography that has been created showcasing some really nice views. And Bevy is continuing to make progress on the UI side of things with new standard widgets, including popovers, menus, radio buttons, color pickers, and more. And there are standard widgets and feathers widgets, which are roughly speaking like headless widgets you can style yourself that only provide functionality, as well as feathers, which is a tailwind or bootstrap type set of widgets pre-configured and ready to use. Automatic directional navigation for UI elements has also made it in, which enables navigation using gamepads and arrow keys without tedious wiring that was required before. Fonts also gain the ability to use variable font weights and features, which is a really nice improvement with more new fonts being variable fonts every day. Fonts that are capable of using ligatures, small caps, and other features are also supported. And Bevy has long had some camera controllers in its examples directory, and now that code has been extracted into the shipping Bevy crate under the Bevy camera controller crate. This release contains two new cameras, free camera and pan camera, which you can enable using the appropriate feature flag. It's notable that these aren't production grade controllers, but more intended to be quick start helpers and capable dev tools. Your 3D platformer camera is still going to need some custom work. And it's pretty common for people coming from object oriented game engines to want to be able to access components arbitrarily directly from an entity reference. This is in line with how those object-oriented game engines use class objects, which can be quite different from Bevy. In 0.18, a more familiar safe path is provided with get components mute. This does have some performance implications to make sure the access is safe, but unsafe versions are also available if you really need the performance and really know what you're doing. And especially on the web, people try to use as few features of the engine as possible. This means turning the nice comfy default features off and individually picking your way through all the features Bevy offers, which is quite a few. This is no longer needed, as in 0.18, a series of higher level feature collections have been implemented. True minimalism will still have to contend with the base feature flags, but now 2D games can also easily exclude 3D features by using the 2D feature group. And there's also some nice mid-level feature groups too. This also makes it easier to say, exclude a renderer and write your own. The new GLTF extension handling is close to my heart, both because I wrote the original PR and because I maintain Skeen, a Blender and Bevy integration, which exports GLTF. In 0.18, Bevy can support processing GLTF data at load time, including or excluding extension data. This enables crates like Skeen to define cross-application data formats, such as the Bevy component extension Skeen defines. This means that other applications can then target those formats. For example, I've seen people experimenting with including the component data format Scheme provides a processor for from other level editors and even Godot. This also enables new use cases like collecting and constructing animation graphs in the GLTF loader or replacing materials at load time. And screenshots and screen recording are now both available in Bevy with a couple caveats. Screen recording currently doesn't work on Windows due to challenges with video codecs, 
but can be enabled in the dev tools to create automated marketing materials for trailers, Steam pages, and more in CI. That's right, you can commit to, say, GitHub Actions and record your videos automatically with camera movement and anything else you want. Never have out-of-date marketing material again. There are, of course, other features that I've left out, and you can read the full release notes over on the bevy.org website. And don't forget to check the migration guides as well if you're updating your applications. What features are you excited for? 